Hey everybody, this is Chris with Overclockers Club. I've got a new cooler here from Scythe. This is the Big Shuriken 3. It's a low profile cooler, so it takes a completely different approach than the other ones that I've reviewed from Scythe, which include the Mugen 5 Rev B, the Fuma 2, and the Ninja 5. Now this is the most recent cooler here that I reviewed, the Ninja 5. It's a really nice cooler. Actually, it made the number one uh, pick for my top three coolers for 2019, so you wanna check that out. But anyway, we'll get this little guy here out of the box and see what it looks like. So I have the unit out of the box and the first thing I see here of course is we have a very thin 120 millimeter fan and actually we've got the there we go cord was stuck in there but it is a four pin PWM connector it is very low profile. Now you're not going to go into this and win any overclocking uh, tournaments with it. And that's not the intention. This is made to give you a level of performance far above that of a stock cooler in a very shallow case or a very low profile situation where you've got like a mini ITX board. So they try to pack as many fins as close together as they can but still allow airflow. And you'll notice we have five heat pipes that project through the base plate and they all terminate here on one side. And you'll also notice that there's an offset. And the height here from the base plate to the top of the fan, and they use this extra thin Kaze Flex 120, is 69 millimeters. And that's important to know so that you can size it for the right case. Again, this is most likely gonna be used like uh, on a mini ITX motherboard. Now the fan specs, and I think this is really impressive, you've got up to 1800 RPMs and around 50 CFM of uh, airflow is what this little guy is capable of. So you should be able to move a decent amount of air through it. And the other thing I like about a downflow cooler like this is the air that is being pulled in from the top and pushed down through the bottom actually helps to cool some of your motherboard components. So you now the fan is retained with these four screws at the corners. And for installation, you really don't even need to take the fan off because it looks like you can get to the screws, one there, move the blades a little one there. You just want to make sure when you put the screwdriver down through there, you don't damage the blades. And on the side here, there is a nice, uh, which side is it? There we go. Nice scythe logo on an end cap to cover the end of the fin stack there. And then the other side, you can see how the heat pipes sort of snake up through the fin stack there. So we got these four that are close to the center line. Then we got one little straggler here off to the side. And the mounting screws here are spring loaded so they apply a consistent amount of force. And there's a nice little clip here that makes them retained so you don't have to chase them around during installation. And looking at the hardware box there, you've got the standard mounting base bracket, screws, fasteners, mounting brackets for AMD or Intel and uh, some thermal paste and a nice set of fold down instructions there that are pretty comprehensive. They go through all of the steps for Intel or AMD and they have some very nice hints and tips. For example, the two mounting screws I just showed you, those two retained screws, it's basically telling you here to tighten them down evenly, alternate a little on each side instead of just tightening down one side and putting an uneven load on the mounting bracket there and you've got both sides there. Very nice instructions. All right, now I have the motherboard prepared. This is an older Maximus 4 Gene Z, and I'm using a uh, Core i7-2600K for the processor. Now I have the right bracket here. Uh, there's only one bracket, actually. I have the right side mounts, I should say. And then the fasteners, and then I'll get the thermal paste applied and we should be good to go. So for this particular Intel installation, the next thing you do after you get the bracket pushed up, you get these studs pushed up through the back of the motherboard there, is you use these little plastic barrel-like spacers and you'll see on one side it is just a flat plastic face and the other side there's a little rubber insert and that's the side that you want to go down against the motherboard so that's what gets pushed down over these studs. So then it should look like that with the little spacers installed. 
Now there's a little bit of an interference fit, so when you push them down over it, it keeps the bracket from falling back through. Now before I really get everything bolted down, I originally thought that big notch on the right was for RAM, but that's actually for VRM clearance there. So I kind of do a, just lay that in there, do a quick test fit, sort of. Because if I try to put it on this side, flip it around, it won't clear the RAM at all. So that notch is not for RAM clearance, it's actually for VRM clearance in this orientation. Now the next thing you want to look at and make sure you do, in all the excitement of installing a new cooler, it's real easy to forget to peel this little protective sticker off. And you won't be happy with cooler performance if you leave that on there. So make sure you peel that off. So everything is coming together, just finishing up tightening these screws. And the key here again is to make sure that you alternate a few turns on one screw and then back to the other one until they bottom out. That way you're putting a nice even load on the mounting bracket. And the next thing to do is to connect the fan plug there to the CPU fan header and I'll power it up. So now I have Prime 95 running. I've got the 2600K CPU cranked up to 4.3 gigahertz, running about 1.27 volts. And uh, you can see the temperatures there. We're hovering uh, upper 60s, 70, low 70s, right around there kind of varies a little bit. Of course now your mileage will vary depending upon all kinds of factors, what CPU you're using, what kind of load you put on it, what sort of case you have and the airflow going through it. So like I said, your, your mileage will vary. But what I'll do just for a comparison, I'll go ahead and pop this old stock Intel cooler on there and with the same settings, we'll uh, see what the CPU looks like there. So you can kind of get an idea of the differential and uh, how good this cooler is compared to a stock cooler. So with the overclock cranked up to 4.3 gigahertz on this 2600K, I like to get out the thermal camera and just sort of look around. Now this doesn't really tell you anything definitive about the cooler, it just sort of shows you where the heat's build up. And you can see being that it is a downflow cooler, you are pushing air down across the motherboard VRM and other components. So that's one of the advantages, you get that additional airflow to help keep things cool. We are running at uh, maximum fan speed of 1800 RPMs. So that sort of shows where the heat's located. It is close to 70 degrees Fahrenheit in the room. And uh, again, with a cooler like this, your airflow through the case is really important because no matter how good or how efficient your CPU cooler is, you've got to get that hot air exhausted from the case. And what I'll do now is I'll go ahead and pop this old stock cooler on there. Keep the settings the same and just see what the temperature difference is. My guess is uh, it's going to be quite a bit higher here with the stock cooler. So now I have the stock cooler on there. It is certainly much smaller and the fan is uh, certainly not capable of moving as much air as the big 120 millimeter fan on the big Shuriken 3. And it's no surprise that our temperatures with the same overclock CPU voltage, um, we're getting into the upper 80s and I suspect that is going to continue to climb as we find the upper limit. And our fan speed there, let's see, our fan speed has uh, also maxed out So anyway, it just proves what we already knew that an aftermarket cooler like this, low profile, is uh, going to give you much better results than a stock cooler. Now I get a lot of questions about uh, will this cooler fit this CPU or this motherboard? And short answer is if it, if it fits the socket coverage, then sure, will it work? Absolutely. 
The question is, how happy will you be with it? Well, it really comes down to the variables such as, what are you doing with it? Are you overclocking? Is it a light overclock? Is it a heavy overclock? Are you overclocking all the time or just every once in a while? Uh, the biggest factor really is how much airflow are you getting through the case? And uh, what type of environment do you live in? Are you in Northern Canada or are you maybe down in a tropical area like Puerto Rico? Uh, all those things come together and affect the efficiency of the cooler. So I would say that this Big Shuriken 3 though is a pretty good step up from your stock cooler. But I'm going to go ahead and throw this Noctua NHL12S. It's also a low profile, very similar in size and shape and uh, leave the settings the same. Let's see what it looks like. So there is the NH12 LS parked on top of the 2600K. We got the same settings here, 4.3 gigahertz, 1.27 volts, and the temperatures are very close. We're about a degree or two less with this cooler. However, some of the things to point out uh, are the height and RAM compatibility. Now, the Noctua cooler here, the height to the top of the fin stack is 70 millimeters, whereas the Scythe cooler, it's 69 millimeters to the top of the fan. So this one comes in a millimeter shorter than uh, even going up to the top of the fin, so that's not including the fan. Now, you do have the option of relocating this fan underneath the cooler but you're still going to be a millimeter taller than the Scythe cooler. Of course, you don't really have any options for relocating the fan here. You do have five heat pipes here as opposed to the four heat pipes on the Noctua cooler, but as you can see, that didn't really play into it a whole lot. Uh, the other thing though is the RAM compatibility. You can see though, I had to pull out two sticks of RAM to get this to fit. Actually, I only had to pull out one, but uh, I went ahead and pulled the two out in a pair. Um, and that's not a huge deal. You can get RAM that's lower profile, so that's not really a showstopper necessarily. But you can see that's awfully close there. And I even tried putting the cooler, I tried changing the clock position and uh, every time I had some issues there and this is the only position really that it would fit on this particular motherboard. Now that's not to say that's the same with every motherboard. Price point between these two coolers, uh, this one right now is coming in around $50 on Amazon and this one's around $47, so there's a slight price advantage here to the Scythe cooler. But in terms of performance, they are very similar, but you do have uh, a little better clearance and compatibility, again, at least on this particular motherboard uh, with the Scythe cooler. So the point here really wasn't to bash one cooler over the other. They're both great coolers. But uh, I really do like the fact that the Scythe Big Shuriken 3 here can fit in a small space. They're really able to do a lot because the performance was very similar. And this cooler here is slightly larger. Anyway, uh, again, price point. This comes in around $47, $48. I think it's a good value given the fact that you can cram a lot here into a small space. And this is obviously several levels above what you're going to get with a stock cooler. And when you build a small system, you really have to do your homework and make sure everything fits. Uh, different motherboards and different RAM configurations, uh, those all have to factor in there. So given the performance here and the attractive style, I'm going to give this the Overclockers Club Gold Award. This is Chris with Overclockers Club. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe.